I'm in a field, yet I have a completely functional computer set up. Well, minus a keyboard, if I kind of forgot to bring one. And because I know somebody's going to say in the comments that I'm cheating and I use a external power, you can see here, it's all so. So, how am I doing this? Well, it all comes down to this guy over here, which is what we'll be building in this video. This idea came to me when I found myself in possession of this battery. I was building it for a customer, but they cancelled the order before I was finished. I'm now stuck with a 12 volt, 20 amp hour battery that I have no use for. And after brainstorming a couple of things, I've decided I'm going to build a portable power station with it. So what exactly is a portable power station? Well, it looks something like this. And this particular unit was graciously sent over by All Powers, and I'll put a link to them in the video description. It's basically just a giant power bank that you can run 240 volt appliances off. So how does one work? Well, for that, we're going to have to go over to the whiteboard. So how does a power station like this work? Well, it's actually much more simple than you might think. You have a big battery which stores all your energy. This battery is wired into something called an inverter. Now the inverter's job is simply to take DC power and turn it into AC power. You then feed that through a transformer to give you your desired output voltage. You also have a charger to charge up this battery. It's very simple at this stage. Let's take a deeper look at each individual component. I'm going to explain an inverter now, and if you don't get it, that's perfectly fine. It won't affect you in the rest of the video. So, how does an inverter work? Well, you have a tiny chip, like this one, the 555, which is one of the most common tiny chips on the market. That generates a pulse here, which is a square wave that looks something like that. That pulse then goes into two MOSFETs, an NPN and a PNT. Why are they different? So glad you asked. The NPN will turn on at this point in the sine wave, because the voltage is flowing the correct way. But then, at this point in the sine, in the square wave, the PNP will turn on and the NPN will turn off, and so on and so forth, thus generating that AC current. That was then going through this transformer and giving us AC power. And while you could build your own like this, mine is sub-ideal because it gets too hot at around 150 to 200 watts. So for that reason, I'm going to order a pre-made one off of eBay. Well, eBay has at least shipped me a package. Let's crack it open and see what's inside. Okay, I know. This seems to be what I ordered. Real quick interlude. It started raining like all hell, and I had to go out and move everything I'd left outside inside. Sorry about that. There was a brief tropical storm, which kind of caught me by surprise. I've gone and dealt with that now, and I'm back. Let's test this thing. In order to test it, I've cooked it up to my battery by the method of holding wires onto this socket thing. And I'm going to plug in my amplifier and see if it works. At this stage, what? Oh, why is it on? I've just realized I'm going to get copyright striked for that song, so here's a royalty free song. Chef. Looking my name, taking hold of myself. I pour a shot in a glass, take a sip, take a swing. So the inverter works. That's a definite positive. This means we're only missing one part of the entire system, and that's a charger. Fortunately, the customer has allowed me to keep his charger. 
and I'm sure this is a very good charger because the name is 12 volt 3S charger for lithium iron switching power supply. There is one issue now, and that is the size. Because there's no way I'm packing all these boxes into a nice package. So, instead, let's crack them open and see what's inside. To begin with, I opened up the inverter and discovered that it's actually a lot more simple than you would think. There's just two plugs and the inverter circuit board. The charger, again, was much more simple than you would think. Unfortunately, this particular charger had no safeties, so I would not recommend using one like this. With all the parts extracted, I needed somewhere to put them. So I 3D printed a case to store them in. I used PETG to print this as it's typically more robust than PLA. Now that I had a box, I had to do the internal wiring. I began by soldering the output of the battery to the input of the inverter. However, I soldered a switch on the positive terminal of the battery to allow me to turn the whole power station on and off to stop wasted power while I wasn't using it. I then attached the output of the inverter to this universal plug socket. I soldered two black wires to the socket first before putting it into the faceplate to allow me more room to work with. Bearing in mind this is AC power so the orientation of the wires does not matter. As my next port of call, I soldered the charger to the inputs of my inverter, being very careful to use the correct polarity. By soldering directly to the inputs of the inverter, I'm able to use the switch to turn on and off the charging and stop leakage power going into the charger. In an ideal world, you would use a relay for this so that the charger could turn on when it was plugged into power. Unfortunately, I don't have a compatible relay, but I don't think it'll matter too much. At this stage, I also affixed a voltmeter to the front of my case in order to more or less be able to tell the charge level. With all the connections made, I heat shrunk every connection in order to ensure that there would be no short circuits and hopefully save me a fire. That being said, both the battery and inverter do have built-in short circuit protection as a safety. With all the electrical joints now complete, I securely attached all the parts together in the orientations and positions they would go in in the final product. In order to do this, I used some thick gaff tape, or gorilla tape as you Americans would call it, and it holds them very securely in position. At this stage, I placed it into the box, but I used a generous helping of contact adhesive to secure the battery into the case and hopefully stop any movement. I had a small amount of difficulty fitting all the wires and cables inside the enclosure in a way that made sense, but with a little bit of persistence, it wasn't too hard. The final thing I did was 3D print a rubber sleeve to stretch over the outside of the case and make it look slightly nicer. And with that, the project is done. Hi, it's me in the present slash less of the past slash future relative to when I made that video. And basically, I get to now find out how good this is. So as you saw in the intro, it does power a full computer system. But there are lots of devices out here that do similar things. So why is mine special? Well, let's take it inside and compare it to a competitor with the same capacity. So how does this compare to the all powers we looked at in the beginning of the video? Well, it's smaller and it's lighter. However, it does only have one power output, whereas the all powers has two 
as well as several USB outputs. It also doesn't have any of the fancy features like Bluetooth and smart power monitoring and even a battery gauge. That being said, if you do want to undertake this project, it was really fun and I would recommend doing it if you have the technical know-how. Just be wary because you are working with high voltages to be careful that you do know what you're doing and you don't accidentally shock yourself. And one last thing, because I need to say this, I think. I wasn't sent that video thing for a YouTube video. I was sent that power station for a TikTok. So I don't think this classifies as a sponsored video, but I don't know.